Hello, and welcome to Chapter 3, Section 3.2, and this will be the last day, Day 4, of this section. And we're going to start with a conversation about interpreting computer regression output. Uh, Minitab is an old program, it's still widely used uh, to do statistical analysis. Um, we don't have to know how to use the program. We just got to learn how to read some of the outputs from this. Just like we're going to learn how to use our calculator and then read the outputs from that as well too. So the only technology we have uh, to really learn is our TI Inspire calculator. But we got to be able to read these things. So uh, typical output, some of these things uh, we certainly don't know yet and won't have to worry about for a while. Uh, but there are the main pieces here. Um, so um, in, a, in a given Minitab output, you should be able to find and create the regression equation. You should be able to create your, your y hat equals a plus bx. Um, so you know we got to look for that slope b. So we got to find out where that slope is. Well, we've got two things over here. Uh, we're talking about making our predictor equation. We've got a constant value. The constant value uh, is uh, our y-intercept, because yeah, that value does not have a variable attached to it. In the data that we've got here, this happens to be data about miles driven. So this first, this coefficient, this is, that means the coefficient of our variable miles driven is at 0 0.16292. That, that is our slope. Okay, so if I was creating that equation, I go y hat equals and then 0.16292x is the, sl the slope part that's attached to the x. Again, our coefficient uh, of our constant term uh, is our y-intercept. That's 38,257. I'm going to clean that up here. Let me rewrite that. So that a value, that uh, y-intercept for that matter, uh, is 38,257 plus our slope of 0.16292x. And that's how we can create the equation from those values there. Should also be able to find the s, the standard deviation of the residuals. Uh, that is uh, right here. So there was the... Uh, average distance uh, each po uh, point is from the regression line is that many units. So that's typically how far each point is away. And again, now here's our R squared value uh, right here where it says R is squared. Uh, so what, 66.4% of the data is accounted by uh, the regression line or follows the regression line. Um, other stuff we don't need to worry about right now. These are the main pieces. Yeah. So there's some other similar uh, packages out there uh, that we might come across um, as we uh, see some of the different outputs. So we just got to be able to find those pieces and just understand um, you know, what we're going to be looking for. So um, some of those same pieces are found in other. There's a uh, program called Jump. Um, we won't see a lot of this one here. But again, looking for that R squared value. We look for that mean square error. That's yes, that mean square error. Uh, no, we, it's that average, so that's kind of the key word there, average uh, distance from the mean. And if you remember that formula, uh, we were squaring the residuals and then eventually square rooting that after uh, running through the formula. So that's where that standard deviation of the residuals are. That's where our, uh, that's our S value. And then again, this one's very similar. So looking at intercept. So intercept, uh, that'd be the value there. And there's the, the uh, variable that we're dealing with. So miles driven is the, uh, the B value, the slope uh, that we'd have for that problem. Yeah, and again, don't worry about some of this other stuff. Don't have to roll and talk about it for a while. So obviously using technology is the most convenient way to do the rigorous lay squares regression line. But it is possible to find that equation uh, by hand uh, by using the means and the standard deviations of each of the two variables, the 
the standard deviation of the x is the standard deviation of the y's, the mean of the x is the mean of the y's. So we could actually, to calculate this b value, to calculate that b value, uh, what we could do is we could take that r value, remember that r value uh, was our correlation coefficient. Okay, so that was our that was our correlation coefficient that we described earlier in this chapter. Uh, this is the standard deviation of the y's of the y values. Uh, so in your calculator, we, we just do a, a one variable statistics uh, on just the y column, and then here you would do just a one variable statistics just on the x column to be able to find the standard deviation of those. Uh, and then you'd have the b value. Now you have to do this first. You have to do this first uh, because that b value is this value right down here used to find the y-intercept. Uh, so to find that y-intercept a, you take the mean of the y's minus this b times the mean of the x's. And that would give you the a value. So uh, there are some problems that we have to do using this by hand. Uh, and these formulas are uh, uh, on the formula sheet uh, for the AP exam uh, that you'll be able to use for tests. You don't need to memorize these. You just got to know how to use them and put the numbers in the right spots. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about correlation and regression wisdom. Okay. Uh, they're very, very powerful tools for describing a relationship between two variables. And when you use these tools, be aware of their limitations. The first one, the first limitation, is the distinction between explanatory, or in other words, the x values, and the response variables, which are the y values, is important in regression. It does make a difference in the equation that we will write, uh, that you have uh, here the, the ex, uh, explanatory variable is miles driven, but over here, it is the response variable, and vice versa. So you can see uh, it has a, uh, uh, a change in number one, our prediction equation. See that they are different. Even the, st the standard deviation of the residuals is different as well. Now, the R squared value, or correlation, a coefficient of determination, uh, doesn't change because it doesn't change the position of the dots away from the line. Uh, so that, that itself uh, would stay the same. But be careful. Be careful. Make sure you got the right explanatory variable uh, on the x value. I'm not mixing them up. A second little uh, caution to be aware of. And just because uh, you know, you've got you, you, you got some data and you get an R value uh, and thus an R squared value. Um, that itself does not tell you uh, if the data is linear. Okay? It just talks about the strength of the linear relationship. And what's interesting about uh, these pictures down here, you can see that this one uh, you know does look relatively linear um, and probably moderately strong positive. This one certainly is not linear. This one here is actually very, very strong linear if we didn't consider this one right here. So we know then that our, our uh, regression lines probably pulled up that way a little bit and would weaken the strength of that relationship uh, with that dot in. This one here, it's like, man, we got just a whole bunch of eights right here. This guy throws it way off. So if we're trying to draw a line, um, we'd have to consider that one and probably draw like this. The interesting thing is here, you would have the same line uh, for each of these uh, different equations, and they would all have the same R value. So again, just because you've got a, uh, a very strong R value, and that's an R squared value as well too, that doesn't mean the data is linear. Uh, it just talks about the strength of the association to a regression line that would be drawn uh, to fit that data. So again, always look back to what the original data is. Don't always just trust that if you've done if you've done linear regression, the data is linear. Um, it may not. It may not be. Okay. Third thing about the wisdom of correlation regression: um, correlation and least squares regression lines. So in other words, your your R values 
and your least squares regression lines, your y hat equals your a plus bx. They are not resistant to outliers. Outliers can change both your r value and your equation. So for example, with that same set of data that we just had, okay, what we can look at, you know, if we go back here, you see there's, uh, there's our data right here. And what can happen here, both these child 18 and 19 look like they're outliers. This outlier here is in the y direction. It's, it's higher up uh, from the cluster of data right here. Child 18 is an outlier in the x direction. It is, you know, if we look at the end, the end of that data here, uh, child 18 is far to the right of the data set. Okay, so um, what uh, you know, we got to be a little aware of then is if we take here with all 19 children, if I keep all these kids in, get an R value of negative 0.64, which makes sense. It's a negative association and, you know, moderately strong. Um, and we get the regression equation. Okay, that's the equation for the green line. All right. Now, if I take child 19 out, you know, just take them out, uh, really what that all does with the line is, you know, because that, that, that child up there was pulling the line up. That's why the green line has been pulled up a little bit. And if you take that one out, it will kind of release it, and that red line will just kind of fall back this way. Um, you know, kind of almost universally across the whole line. Uh, that's kind of what a, an outlier in the y direction will do. Um, it certainly will have an effect on the on the r value, um, and uh, certainly you know, can change that y equation a little bit. It's a different equation. Um, so uh, those are just generally considered just outliers. Child 18 is a little different case. Uh, child 18, um, if we were to pull that that knock that one out. Uh, you know, we can see that that green line, you know, was affected by this one. It was kind of pulled down by that. But if I take that out, uh, it pops back up here. It doesn't have to account for that value over there. Uh, so you can kind of follow the pattern just right through here and not have to worry about coming down uh, if we're being affected by that 18. So, uh, you know, an outlier in the x direction, outlier in this x direction away from that data, uh, further to the right has a greater effect on the R value. As you can see from here to here, not a lot of change, but from here to here, uh, quite a big change in our terms of our R value. So um, what we can say here is kind of describing those two different types of outliers. Uh, if I go back here, it says least squares lines that make the sum of the squares of the vertical distance to the points as small as possible. Okay. So that's what least squares lines do. They, they, the sum of the squares are always, some of the squared errors, or some of the squares of the vertical distance are always made as small as possible. A point that is extreme in the x direction with no other points near it pulls the line towards itself. That's called an influential outlier. So if I go back here, this 18 is actually called, more specifically, an influential outlier uh, because it changes that R value significantly. Okay. Uh, just a regular outlier. An outlier is an observation that lies outside the overall pattern of the other observations. Points that are outliers in the Y direction, but not the X direction of a scatter plot have large residuals. Other outliers may not have large residuals. You know, so if I look back here, certainly this has got a large residual, that vertical distance uh, from that line is quite large. Uh, so it is an outlier compared to some of these other ones. Um, so, but influential again is, uh, if removing it would markedly change, would markedly change the result of the calculation. In other words, markedly change, I always like to say that R value. You know, so again, points in the uh, outliers in the X direction are often, are often influential outliers. Okay, here's wrapping it up. Uh, we got a few seconds left on the timer here, so those are the things that we should have covered. Uh, you should also be able to now do uh, the assignment, the last one here, on 3.2 day 4.
All right. Good luck, and we'll see you in Chapter 4.